if you are a New Yorker and we're here, this place could be off limits to a lot of people emotionally. I unfortunately lost my sister in 9-11. She was an equities trader uh, in Tower 2, in the South Tower. So I have a, I had a love-hate relationship with this area. After 9-11, I did not come down here a lot. Carrie Irvine is a painter. After she lost her sister, she lost the will to work. A friend convinced her to reach out to the developers of the World Trade Center site. Here at Building 3, artists can work rent-free, 80 stories in the air on unleased floors. I remember I got down here and I turned around and it, the pool was right across the street and she's smack in the middle of the wall facing both of these towers. I took it as a sign, sort of forgot where I was. For the last 15 years, artists of all kinds have used this space as a studio. They come and go as they please. Some let the gravity of where they are inform their work, intentional or not. She was my best friend, and she was a beautiful person inside and out. I can touch her name in the morning, just say hi. It's been incredibly healing for me and life-changing. One of the most dramatic events in New York City in the 1960s was the construction of the World Trade Center. Design and construction would take years and the efforts of thousands of people. They were massive, two icons in the sky and a beacon to the world. The towers were built and owned by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. The architect behind the towers was famed Japanese-American Minoru Yamasaki, who won the job in 1962. This is an original model of the World Trade Center from the 1960s. It was just a phenomenally large building. The towers began their ascent in 1968. At the time of their completion, they were the tallest buildings in the world. Using state-of-the-art structural engineering, they soared 1,368 feet into the sky, surpassing the Empire State Building, which once held the title by 118 feet. Because it was built on a landfill, workers had to dig 70 feet down into bedrock to create a slurry wall to keep the Hudson River out. The water is always trying to get in. The Port Authority back in the 1960s created what was known as a bathtub. So they created slurry walls around the perimeter of the site to keep the water out. Then they built up the basements and the foundations of the Twin Towers, and then they built the buildings on top. The towers were only the tallest in the world for a few short years before the completion of the Sears Tower in Chicago. Still, they represented the pinnacle of modern engineering and quickly became an iconic part of the New York skyline. The towers became a central hub for the burgeoning global economy. When the Port Authority put up the World Trade Center for lease, New York real estate tycoon Larry Silverstein won the bid. He signed the lease on July 24, 2001. We took title uh, to the Trade Center uh, six weeks before 9-11. 9-11 transpired and it changed our lives totally. Investors occurring in New York City this morning. And if you are a New York City firefighter, drop what you're doing, report to your company. Now find ourselves with this massive issue. Do we or don't we? As the dust of the towers settled, and the sun set on America's darkest day. A two-decade conversation began that would define downtown Manhattan forever. There were a hodgepodge of ideas about what to do. Some wanted a memorial. Others, 46% in fact, wanted to rebuild them exactly as they were. A certain future president was this plan's loudest champion. That's where our loved one's spirits are. And we will never look away from it until we have a proper, respectful memorial and the dead are respected for what they did for this country. Everything is money. Everything is money, money, money. We need to rebuild. We need to make money. Money doesn't bring back lives. Money doesn't bring back mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and daughters and sons. Money doesn't bring that back. It became obvious to me the importance was to 
build it back as quickly as you possibly could, because without it, lower Manhattan would stagnate. It would, ne it would never be the same. This place, this should not be a gravesite. Everyone who lost their life down there does not expect the rest of us to be dragged down with them. This can be and should be a place of healing and rebirth. In November 2001, then-Governor George Pataki and New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani formed the Lower Manhattan Development Corporation, the group that would oversee the redevelopment of Ground Zero. The group held a competition to design the new space. Proposals flooded in from around the world. Some designs were more of a memorial. One would recreate the towers in almost skeleton-like structures. But it was the design of Polish-American architect Daniel Liebeskin, which carved out room for both the memorial and a new landmark tower that eventually won. For a second, maybe, uh, I thought, God, what did I get myself into? But, but it, did, it wasn't more than a second that I thought, however difficult this process is, however fraught it is with emotions, uh, why shouldn't it be? There's so much at stake here. I will stick by it. When I struggled with the master plan, I thought, what does this really mean? How do you combine in one project the homage to the heroes of 9-11, those who fell, who sacrificed their lives on behalf of all of us, and at the same time reassert the foundations for a resurgent Manhattan, for a resurgence of the democratic world and of democracy in the world itself? It set out half of the site, eight acres, as a place of remembrance. That was probably the most important function at the time was to remember and acknowledge what happened on 9-11 and commemorate the lives that were lost. A feature of the master plan was the complex itself, a city within a city. The design would reconnect Lower Manhattan to Tribeca and the rest of Manhattan. He added in 10 million square feet of office space, replacing the office buildings that were destroyed on 9-11. But not in two towers, like were there before 9-11, but in a spiral of five towers, starting with what he called the Freedom Tower and its symbolic height of 1,776 feet, and spiraling all the way down to five World Trade Center. And these five buildings enveloped and protected that memorial uh, area. Liebeskin's design would provide the framework for the 20-plus year evolution of the site. But he would not get to design the tower. His original design called for 64 floors of office space and the rest of the tower to be a garden in the sky. Liebeskin's plan was praised by city and state officials, including Governor Pataki, who imposed an aggressive timeline to break ground. But Silverstein wanted to hire someone else to design the tower. Silverstein brought in David Childs of Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill to redesign the building alongside Liebeskin. Childs was actually one of several builders brought in to develop the vision for the site as a whole. He had already designed the Seven World Trade Center, which would be the first building to go up. Larry Silverstein hired his own architects to design each of these buildings. He hired three Pritzker Prize winners, which is like the Nobel Prize of Architecture, he insisted that these architects move from London and from Tokyo and from New York into a design studio that he built for them. So for a year and a half, these three architects, they worked together. They each had their own building, but there was so much shared infrastructure below grade that it was critical for Larry that they worked together. <laughs> 